Hello, and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously, I've been talking about Lady Louisa Connolly and the print room that she created at Castletown in County Kildare. The room dates from 1768, which is when Louisa set about putting it in place. But this was far from being a spontaneous spur-of-the-moment activity. As already mentioned, she'd been collecting prints for some six years prior to hanging them in their positions. And then there was the important question of coming up with a master plan, of deciding what should go where. An enormous amount of planning had to happen before the first pot of glue could be cracked open. Louisa needed to go through her collection of pictures and work out which would look best next to each other, or in the same section of a wall. One thing that we can notice is how the space has been broken down into a series of smaller spaces, each of which has its own character and design. There are a number of challenges which had to be overcome, such as corners, to make sure that the pictorial approach to these was done in an orderly fashion. I'm not sure Louisa necessarily came up with quite the right solution on this occasion. But she had a lot to consider. There was the matter, for example, of what would be the best treatment of a jib door. A separate scheme had to be devised for it, but one that would fit in with the rest of the room and not draw attention to the door itself. And because the room is rather tall, the space above the two main doors also had to be filled satisfactorily. Louisa embarked on what were, in effect, a series of editorial decisions based on the size and shape of the prints that were available to her. But then she didn't always adhere to the original shape. Look at the octagonal forms over the chimney piece. They look rather like smart dinner place mats. In fact, we know that in the course of her preparations, she cut and changed the original rectangular format of some 46 prints to either an octagonal, an oval, or a circular shape, or to a rectangle with a convex top. Her challenge was to come up with a visual balance based on size and shape with sufficient variation to hold the attention. It's also worth pointing out that the prints didn't come with their present charming frames. The material for these was bought separately and then pasted around each picture. Notice that the frames are all different, which meant again that Louisa had to make decisions about what to use where. And then there are the incidentals, the delicious floral swags and garlands and other decorative flourishes not to mention all the pretty fluttering ribbons and ropes pasted above each picture to look as though this was how the print was actually attached to the wall. Only when all the planning had been finished and a full scheme worked out could Louisa embark on putting each picture into its rightful place. It turns out that the prints were not actually glued straight onto the wall. In fact, once the shapes had been cut out, they were pasted onto lengths of warm, off-white painted paper. This, in turn, was attached to the walls on battens, overlaid with cloth. Finally, when all of these were up, the job was done. Lady Louisa's print room is a much more interesting space than first appears to be the case, not least because, as we've seen, of the amount of preparatory work and calculation involved in its creation. So we're incredibly lucky that it has survived intact and in situ when so many other examples of the genre have either been lost or hopelessly compromised. The print room at Castletown is one of the most special spaces in this very special building, and I would encourage all of you to go and see it as soon as you can. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Goodbye.